Hi everybody, Paul Gallagher here. Um, what I want to cover today is um, the Advanced Black and White Drago. I've done one of these videos in the past, but it was essentially around the days of the uh, 3880 printer, and it, it's slightly out of date. Some of the, the, the dialogue boxes have changed, some of the menus have changed, so I thought I'll do a new one. Now, where I am in the process of, of producing the black and white print is this particular image of this tree has been through uh, Photoshop and Adobe Camera Raw. I could have used Lightroom. It's been, I've, I've achieved the tones I wanted, the contrast I wanted, and it's been, more importantly, finished tonally, resized and final stage sharpened. So it's ready to go to the printer. Now this is the journey we're gonna take to use the Epson Advanced Black and White Printer. We're gonna go up to the top and go File, and we're going to click on print okay it brings up a dialog box okay firstly make sure your printers in the upper dialog box if you've got more than one printer it may be another one that appears there I'm using the sure color p800 series printer okay um, next thing what you will normally have is this you will normally have Photoshop managers colors and probably a paper profile there that's what we normally have. That's the conventional way of using it, certainly printed in colour using Epson printers. Uh, the printer profile here says Sure Colour P800 series printer using ultra smooth fine art paper. The reason for that is the printer profile ensures that what you see, the colours and the tonality that you see on your screen, is matched when using that printer, that paper combination. Okay. What we do when we're using the Advanced Black and White Driver is different. First, firstly, it's very different that we go to Colour Handling and we click on where it says Photoshop Manages Colours, we click on Printer Manages Colours. Now straight away what you will see is that the printer profile is missing. And the reason for this is that what the Advanced Black and White Driver does is it cuts two inks out of the mix. It cuts out the full magenta cartridge and the cyan cartridge because them two colors create color casts in ordinary digital printing so what the advanced black and white driver does is removes them and uses the other ink colors within the printer they mix up and make the neutral grays okay now this box here this thumbnail box here is uh, it is basically giving you an idea a very accurate idea of what will come out of the printer the black line round the outside is the edge of your piece of paper and where you see your image position on it on the piece of paper and the white border that will be the border you'll get on your print now if there's anything wrong here don't alter it here okay if there's anything wrong here say for example you may get something strange and it looks like this never go here and hit print whatever you do, because it will come out looking like that. It's a very honest little dialogue box. So make sure that everything here looks like you'd want it to when it comes out of the printer. Okay, now moving onwards, we go here, we click on print settings at the top. Make sure that's the same print at the P800. And make sure this is the paper size you're intending to print on over here. And then we click on layout there and we come down to print settings now this brings a dialog box up now here we have color sheet feeder media type there's a number of different boxes here that we're going to look at what i want to do is first and foremost the show you with the advanced black and white driver how to invoke it is behind color okay it's here it's behind color here okay what we're going to do is click on that and we'll see that the advanced black and white driver or advanced black and white photo is greyed out. Now the reason for that is the advanced black and white driver can only be used with certain media type, such as fine art media, heavyweight baryta papers. So what we must begin with is use selecting our media type first. So we click on media type there. I'm going to use photo paper and in fact Epsom traditional photo paper sheet. Now when we go to colour there, we can see the advanced black and white photo now is not greyed out and we can access it. Okay. Before I do that, I want to draw your attention to this. This says colour settings here. 
okay? When we invoke the advanced black and white driver there, you will notice that color settings changes to color toning, okay? And what that means is, is that behind the word neutral here are a, num a number of different tones. You can have sepia, warm, cool, and natural, or neutral, should I say. Just leave it with neutral for now. The, the reason being is we want to achieve, have a, a benchmark, a starting point of a neutral black and white print from which we can tone if we choose to later on. Okay, finest detail, uncheck finest detail because it changes the resolution of the print. And now we're going to go in to look at the advanced black and white driver using advanced color settings up here. We click on that and then we can see the advanced black and white driver functionality. Once again, color toning appears, leave it on neutral. And well, the most important thing in this entire dialog box is the tone. Okay, now its default is darker. You can go from darker to darkest or from darker to dark normal and light. My recommendation is that you begin with dark. Okay, it kind of works for me. Some people say it's darker. I think dark seems to work for me. It gives the best tonality that I would like. Um, and, and I stick with it. Uh, the other thing, you've got lots of controls down here. Brightness, contrast, shadow tonality, highlight tonality. I have never, ever had to use these to achieve a good black and white print from Epson printer. Uh, the other thing is that you cannot, if you use these, you cannot see your picture in the background as you're adjusting them. You've got a thumbnail of a young lady to work with. Um, and it's, it's a tiny thumbnail. So if you're going to try and alter these based on how the picture of the young lady is going to alter based on how that might alter your print in the background, I think you're on a hide into nothing. I would leave them as they are. Hit save and then hit print and make a print send it to the printer okay and when it comes out the printer assess it compare it to what you've had you've got on your screen there compare it don't put it side by side because the screen's going to win hands down every time because the screen's emitting light and the printer's reflecting light but compare them in terms of general overall tonality is it too dark is it too light and if it's either of them just go Back to this particular menu here. Don't alter your image in Photoshop in the background. Leave it as it is. Come back to here, and I want you to click on print settings. Okay. Make sure it's the same printer, same paper size. Go from layout into print settings again, and load all these settings back to where they were. Okay. Traditional photo paper sheets. I'm going from color to advanced black and white photo. I'm going to uncheck finest detail then i'm going to go into advanced color settings and see the advanced black and white driver now i would have printed as i mentioned from my favorite which is dark if it comes out the printer and it looks slightly too light then change it from dark to darker if it comes out and it looks still slightly too dark change it from dark to normal and print it out hit save and hit print and I guarantee you that you, know, you only have to do move it maybe from dark to darker or dark to normal, and it will be a pretty good match to your screen, providing, providing you've got your screen profile properly and you've got the luminosity on your monitor set accurately. That's the functionality of the advanced black and white driver. And if used well, it produces fantastic results every single time. It has done for me for many, many years. So good luck with your black and white printing, and I'll speak to you again soon.